Amen, amen, amen. Well, amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for tonight. We give you glory, we give you praise. We declare the Lord as we have entered this season of the word that you are releasing mm. to us to understand your Lordship. We pray the mm. Lord every limitation, every covering, mm. every mm. thing that blocks the entrance of your word, even into our spirit, man. We declare it to mm. be taken away in the name of Jesus. May yeah, we come to Jesus. an encounter of reality and substance. Even in the God. spirit, in Jesus', Jesus. mighty name, we call it done. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Um, praise God. Sir. We, Amen. we give God praise for uh, tonight's uh, session. And I believe, I'm believing, I'm believing definitely that we are finishing chapter two today <laughs> so that we can <laughs> start with chapter three, you know. And of course, it's very important that we uh, understand what God is communicating to us through this book mm. of Ephesians and, sorry, mm. Colossians. And mm. in seeing what the book of Colossians stands for, remember we understood mm. that Colossians is supposed to stand and represent the headship of Jesus Christ in the body. Mm. Okay? Mm. So this headship mm. of Jesus Christ in the body is what mm. we are emphasizing on. And this mm. is the last bit of it that introduces us to the practice of mm. having Jesus as the head, relating to Jesus mm. as the head in the body. Mm. You see, many times mm. people say we are the body of Christ. But do not realize that as the body of Christ, we must be properly mm. aligned with the headship of Christ. Otherwise, we Hallelujah. are an ordinary body. We are as an ordinary entity as any other entity. Actually, in all yeah. the universe, spiritually, mm. it is the church that is headed. Every other thing is working headless. Right? Mm. Spiritually, the church is the only headed entity in the universe. Mm. Mm. And so the church must operate like we have headship. Otherwise, mm. we we'll have no difference in our, you know, our mandatory, you know, carrying out of duties and all that. We'll find out that mm. if we don't assume and accept the headship of Christ, we'll struggle mm. to ex exert the mandatory authority of Jesus Christ upon the face of the mm. earth. And so tonight, mm. I, I just want us to get that at the back of our mind and mind you having mm. it at the back of our understanding that paul is writing mm. to a people who mm. as against the galatian church have mm. received certain teachings into their system and those teachings mm. are called gnosticism now verse 18 of colossians chapter 3 addresses the teachings or the system or the religion called Gnosticism. Now, Gnosticism okay. is from the Greek word Gnosis, and this implies knowledge. Now, listen to me very well, because if you, if you, if you get this, you understand that present day, we have Gnosticism still in the church. You understand it? Mm. Now, mm. so Paul was addressing this in regards to a reality. Mm. Okay, mm. and the reality was this that we we must know that in humans or God created every person with the vacuum of the quest for the spiritual. Okay. Mm. When God created okay. man, okay. man was mm. designed to be the intermediary between two realms. Mm. Okay. Angels mm. are spirits, mm. plants, creation, animals are material. Mm. Mm. Right? Man is the only substantive individual or element or muscle entity that is able to traverse the spiritual and the natural. Okay. Okay. So man is okay. like a conductor. Okay. So for mm. every metal to be a conductor, of course, it must mm. have in its constitution elements that mm. are able to conduct electrons. Okay, mm. so that's how mm. God created us. He created us mm. with a constitution that has ability to conduct divinity. At the same time, contact mm. humanity. That's what God created us mm. from the beginning. Okay, so in the innate nature of every human being, there is a quest for the supernatural. Mm. Some people go like, I don't believe in anything. Well, what they don't mm. believe 
what they believe in is called anything. <laughs> because <laughs> if you don't believe in anything, then you end up believing in everything. Uh, okay? And if someone says, I don't believe in worshiping God, if a person does not worship God, he will find something else to worship. If he doesn't worship yeah. God, he will worship the devil. Yeah. He will worship self. Yeah. He might worship his business. Yeah. might worship his children. Yeah. might worship his family. Mm. Because it is part mm. of the constitution of humans. Mm. In the constitution mm. of humans, there's a, facult there's a faculty in our spirit called fellowship. Mm. Mm. Okay? And that fellowship mm. is that which seeks to have mingling with a supernatural mm. entity. Mm. Okay? So in understanding this, it makes us understand why Paul is now addressing the issue of Gnosticism in the Colossian church. Mm. Okay. And this issue yeah. of Gnosticism, I'm, 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 I'm giving this background to get you to understand why yesterday we understood the, the, the ramifications of the actions of the flesh as against mm. the dependence on God when we mm. understood the circumcision. Okay. Mm. Paul says something in Philippians chapter 3 from verse 10. When he was about okay. to die, 40 years after ministry. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. If mm. by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And he said, it's not that I was already perfect, but there's one thing I do. I forget the things which are behind and I press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So in Philippians chapter 10, yeah. Philippians 3, verse 10 to 12, Paul communicates something to us. Mm. But before Paul communicates mm. something to us, in verse mm. 10, that I may know him, mm. it was, that statement mm. was a statement that was written dependent on two compound predicates that preceded in two verses prior. So in verse 8, he mm. says, now I count all things back down for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, that I may win Christ. Oh. Then 11 um, verse 9 says that, now to be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Oh. So Paul is now saying, in the literal tense of the Greek, this is a, a compounded sentence. And what he means by that oh. is that, verse 10 is dependent on 8 and 9. So when okay. you summarize 8, 9, and 10, you should read this. Mm. To win Christ, to be found in him, so that I know him. So it means mm. how you can know him is by winning Christ mm. and to mm. be found in him. Mm. Okay? And if you get into the scriptures, you understand. In verse, in verse 9, the element of being found in Christ is not to have mm. your own righteousness. Mm. So he said, to be found in him, having not my own righteousness. So brothers and sisters, self-righteousness mm. is your hindrance not to be found in Christ. Mm. To be found in Christ means you must not have your own righteousness. Anything you do, mm. your basis of qualification is not based on mm. your effort. It's based on his action mm. that you respond Hallelujah. to. Hallelujah. Okay? Hallelujah. But the the, the verse 8 is what I'm, I'm really connecting to what we are understanding here from the scriptures. Oh. In verse 8, Paul is now saying to us that, that I may win Christ. And he says, how I win Christ is this, that I count all things but done for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. And prior, prior to this, Paul goes to verse, uh, Philippians 3, verse 5, and says that, yeah. in Philippians 3, 5, he says that, now concerning zeal i persecuted the church then he said yep. i am a hebrew of hebrew circumcised yep. on the eighth day concerning zeal mm. persecuting the church paul lists his credentials mm. his best credentials his academic laurels all these things and paul said all these things he counted for loss for mm. the excellency of the knowledge of christ now paul was mm. not saying that he is bad to work paul was not saying it's bad to have a a, 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 a pedigree of birth. Paul is not also saying that good things must be counted as dung, so it's not important. No. Paul is saying that okay. when I balance the book, because he's using I count, the word count is logizomai, okay. and it actually is a okay. terminology for accounting, logizomai, accounting. Oh. So it means that I am balancing a book in the spirit. There is the credit mm. column and there is the debit column. Mm. In the credit mm. column, it is Christ. Mm. In the debit column, mm. 
my academics, my birth, oh. how old, how old oh. I am, how pretty I am, how gifted I am, all those oh. things oh. are in the debit column. Okay. And Christ is what I've been credited with. So Paul oh. is saying that it's like, oh. uh, uh, how do you call it? Imagine you get the 2020 um, Lexus Jeep. And you enter the Jeep and hey. they tell you, oh, it has reverse cam. It has uh, auto spark. You can, you can start the engine outside the car. You can, you can do auto reverse by itself. A lot of functionalities. Then you enter the car and you just go like, I like all the functionalities. They are powerful. But I just like the leather seating. That's all. I, I like the way it's a black Jeep with a leather interior, red. And it's like that red leather interior is what is important to you. That is actually a lower way of communicating what Paul was trying to communicate. He is not okay. saying that these things are not there or these things are not with okay. me. He is saying that okay. I count the knowledge of Christ far more important than all the other things I have Ooh. in my life. Ooh. Ooh. The excellency of Christ. Wow. And this is what Paul has always communicated in all his letters in, to the church of Ephesus, to the Galatian church, to the Corinthian church. The excellency of the knowledge the epignosis, the higher dimension of the experience of Christ. Oh. He said, that is the excellency oh. of excellencies. Oh. That's the excellency oh. of excellencies. And he's saying oh. here this. Now, I'm, 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 now we are getting to what he's saying in verse, um, verse 18 now. Okay. 18. He's saying 18. now in verse 18 that, and, and the reason I'm saying that he's, he says this prior to verse 18 is because notice what he said. He now comes to explain, like we understood yesterday, all the things that happened yeah. in Leviticus. All the things that happen in the yeah. Bible speaks of Christ. Yeah. So the knowledge of the scripture is Jesus Christ. Mm. The goal of revelation is Jesus Christ. Any revelation that does mm. not communicate Christ mm. is mere knowledge. It's mm. a waste of time. Ah. It's a waste <laughs> of time. You know the strange thing about Solomon? Solomon in First Kings mm. chapter 3, the Bible mm. says that he had prayed all, he had offered 1,000 bullocks to God. Then all of a sudden yeah. he rose up and entered Oh. And what they call it, Hebron. And when he got to Hebron, yeah. he slept off. Now, in the temple, in the days of Solomon, there were two tabernacles. There was Mount Zion oh. and there was Hebron. Hebron was the tabernacle okay. of Moses. Okay? Oh. That was the tabernacle of Moses. Oh. But the tabernacle of Moses oh. had the altar court where the sacrifices were done, had the sanctuary where the, uh, what they call it, menorah, the candlestick, and all those things were done. Yeah. Then, there was the Holy of Holies. But remember, oh. in the Holy of Holies, there was a problem in the days of David. He said, we have oh. heard it in Ephrata, Psalm 132. Oh. We have heard okay. it in the woods. Because David, when he was born, said they were looking for the Ark of the Covenant. And they couldn't find it in town because the Philistines had come for it. Okay, so he said, we have heard of it in Ephrata. And he said, he will not give his eyes sleep till he has found a resting oh. place and a habitation oh. for the the, the, for the Lord Most High. So when he oh, went to get oh. the Ark of the Covenant, remember, he put it on the oh, oxen's oh. back. All right? Yeah. When Uzziah went to touch it. So they were taking it from the fields yeah. in the woods because oh. the Philistines oh. also caused. Wow. When they kept it in their temple, it destroyed Dagon. <laughs> His face flat. They put Dagon erect. They oh. came again. Dagon was scattered to pieces. So they threw the oh. ark into the forest. And David, when he was born, remember David was a young boy when he came into kinship. And he had never yeah. seen the ark of the covenant because actually, according to scripture, the ark of the covenant was taken in the days of Eli, Eli, the mm. priest. So all uh, the yeah. time that Samuel, the prophet, was a prophet, the ark of the covenant was nowhere to be found. So Saul was a king that ruled Israel without the ark of his presence. That is why a time came, scripture said, all they that were rejected, dejected, indebted, ran out of the mm. city into the mm. cave of Adullam because David was mm. a man of the presence. So they were mm. attracted to presence, even in the cave. Ah. And that's the beauty about presence. Yeah. Presence is not about palace. Presence is about Jesus being there. It can be in a forest. Hallelujah. I'm telling somebody who is starting ministry,
Okay, are we lost? Help the network. Um, okay. okay, okay. Are we lost? Okay, we're, we're back now. All right, well, we're back now. Sorry. All right. All right. The, the internet so, is somewhere. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, what happened now was that the moment the Ark of the Covenant was not with Saul, Saul ruled for 40 years without the Ark. So, David said in Psalm 132 that we have heard of it because David had never seen the Ark of Covenant before. Mm. So, we have just mm. heard of it. That's why David was so excited mm. because he had heard of the, mm. the prowess of the Ark of the Covenant. Then David mm. goes for the Ark. On mm. the way, Uzzah touches it because he didn't know the due order. And Bible says, mm. Uzzah touches it, he's struck by God. Then it enters mm. a man's house called Obed Edom, and everything in his house mm. prospers for three months. Then David mm. finds the due order, and listen to this. When he got the ark, he didn't carry it to the tabernacle at Shiloh. Remember, it was at Shiloh. Okay. All right. Okay. That's where Eli and so, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, somewhere where? Amor. And yeah. that was the tabernacle in Hebron. Shiloh was in Hebron. Mm. Now, mm. when he carried the ark, he didn't send it there. He sent it straight to Jerusalem, Mount Zion. Mm. Mm. And had his own tabernacle. So there were two tabernacles mm. in that time. That's why Hebrews mentions it mm. in Hebrews chapter mm. 10, that there were two tabernacles. Mm. The tabernacle of mm. Moses and the tabernacle of David. There were two David. tabernacles. Okay. Yes, so now, this is what is happening. Solomon goes to, the ex, to, to, to Hebron to go and offer mm. the sacrifice. Mm. And after offering mm. all the sacrifices, a thousand bullocks, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, he sleeps over in Hebron after the ceremony, okay. may be made king. Yes, and Bible says in the night, yes, the Lord comes to him and says, what do you want? What will you have me do? Mm. And he tells the Lord that I want to have wisdom. Give me wisdom. Mm. To be able to rule my oh. people. Then the Lord said, because you have not asked oh. for your enemies. And because you have oh. not asked for the lives of... He just kept speaking different things. Bible said, all of a yes, sudden, sir. the Lord spoke. Oh. Oh. And when he spoke, he released um, wisdom on Solomon. And when Solomon woke oh. up in the morning, listen to this. Oh. He oh. immediately left where he was. And oh. came to Mount Zion. That's what scripture said. in oh. first Kings 3. He immediately left Hebron, came to Mount Zion because oh. he realized that wisdom communicated to him that I have gone through the process. I have oh. gone through the methods. I have offered sacrifice. Oh. I have poured the blood. I have done this. But there is no act of his presence. So everything I've done oh. is a waste of time. Oh. All the processes without the person is a waste of time. Oh. So immediately he rose up and realized that the person of his presence is in Zion. So he went to the Ark of the Covenant. That's where he encountered the Lord. Hallelujah. So wisdom is that which makes you pursue the Lord. Oh. <laughs> when you say someone is operating the, the Sophia of God, it's actually that which makes you pursue Christ. Anytime wisdom comes on you, you don't go, you have, you have gone through the process, you have done through, you have done the whole service, but God is not there. No, 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 no. Wisdom will make you look for the Lord. Wisdom will make you look oh. for the Lord. Wisdom will make you look for the Lord. Let me say this to you, beloveds, brethren in the Lord. The most precious, most scarce, most expensive, most rarefied commodity in this life is the presence of the Lord. Mm. And it is wisdom mm. that makes you keep it, find it, mm. hold it down. Because you need the presence of the Lord. Mm. Mm. So having said this, I'm saying this, that everything he wrote in him is hit. Mm. All the treasures mm. of wisdom and knowledge. Mm. In him is hit. Mm. So 18 now says this. Now listen to this. 18 now says that, let no man beguile you of your reward. Oh. Let no man beguile you of your inheritance. Remember, in chapter 1, we realize that we have been brought to the inheritance of the saints of light. 
there is an inheritance for us. And he says that if you don't realize that, listen, the law is your portion and you shall not want because of certain things that you are allowing into your understanding. Oh. The Bible says you will be oh. beguiled. You will be swayed away. You will be hindered. Oh. In fact, the word beguiled is the word defrauded. You will be defrauded oh. of your inheritance in Christ. Oh. You will be defrauded of your inheritance in Christ. Oh. And he said, let no man. And this word let is a present imperative, which implies a command oh. that is ever continuous. Make sure oh. you let no man under any circumstance, under any time, beguile oh. you of your reward. Oh. Of your reward. Oh. Of your reward. Of your reward. And why? And he says, they do this by, they defraud you by, listen to this. Oh. And he, he breaks down Gnosticism. In voluntary humility, and worshipping of angels. Oh. Now I ask myself, why would the Bible say voluntary humility? It means there are two types of humility. <laughs> there are two types of humility. There is humility that comes from the spirit and there is humility that comes from your will. You, you, <laughs> you program yourself to be humble. He said, if you do that, you are beguiling yourself from your inheritance. And another version oh. says that that voluntary humility is a product of a certain type of worship, worshiping angels. And look at what he said next. And intruding into those things which have not been seen. Another version oh. says that entering into visions about angels and the angelic realm and communicating all the strata and all the, it's like you saw angel this. And, and when I was reading, I was like, I was so shocked that, whoa, what even happens in that day? <laughs> Where people now begin to esteem encounters more than the word of God. Danger. Hi. Don't ever, ever use a dream as your diagnosis of a situation than the word of God. The word of, oh God, the word of God is that which lives and abides forever. The word of God is that which is true. And that is standard. The word of God is that which is the person of Christ. A dream is not the person of Christ. A vision is not, listen, le, le, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Don't come to the place, and this is, you say, the voluntary, voluntary, be a voluntary humility and worship of angels is a type of worship. It's like, and it's like uh, people are raised to come to a place where you are like, you, 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 want to, you want to see something. You must see. You must, you must see visions. If you don't see a vision, you are not a Christian. Listen. <laughs> we cannot determine how God should talk to us. Let me even show you a secret. According to scripture, God leads us by the inner witness. Every yeah. other thing is a bonus. Yeah. In fact, let me show you something. Yeah. Israel was led by the physical demonstration of God, yet they were the most carnal. They did not believe yeah. God one. Ooh. The higher, listen, let me, let me say this to, to get your attention. <laughs> in the days of the law, in the days of the works, you see, in the dispensation of the law, works were required. You have to do to okay. be saved. You have to do to be, to, he says, I have done all the law all my life. I, I, I'll mm. do, to do, to be saved. So the law demands you to do something because you must mm. obey. And Bible says they did mm. it, but they did not do it in obedience. Mm. They did it in compliance. So they were doing it, but their heart was something what they were doing because they had to do it. So it's oh. like, if you don't do it, God will be angry. That's why we are doing it. So they were doing things with effort. And that's the, that's the temptation of effort. You do it without even loving God. You are preaching without loving God. You are worshiping without loving God. Like, Bible says, these are people that honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away. That's the tendency. That's the tendency. But look at this. Look at what I'm trying to communicate to you. That was the law. So in that dispensation, oh. When God wanted to communicate, he left the angelic realm, the supernatural realm, oh. and came into the natural realm. Oh. Oh. That's how God spoke to us. Oh. But in the New Testament, remember, oh. last week we understood yes. from the mystery and the fellowship of the mystery that mm. God came in Christ. There was a divine excursion in the incarnation. Oh. 
Divinity oh. came on an excursion for 33 and a half years. Oh. Oh. Then in the resurrection, we entered into relocation, even oh. into divinity. So in the incarnation, divinity came oh. into an excursion in humanity. Oh. But oh. in the resurrection and ascension, oh. humanity oh. went into relocation into divinity. Oh. Oh. A permanent oh. abode. Yes, sir. Jesus came for a temporary visit. Yes, sir. That's why Luke 1 said, Through the tender mercies of the Lord, the day star from on high oh. has visited us. So it was a visitation. Oh. It was not a relocation. Oh. But we, through oh. that, that action of incarnation, were carried in ascension oh. and resurrection into relocation. We are now relocated in Christ. Okay. We are now relocated oh. in the Godhead. We are seated in heavenly oh. places, far above. Oh. Oh. So in that relocation, the act of visitation changed. Oh. In the days of the law and the flesh, God had to come into fleshly mediums to visit his people. Oh. That's why okay. they saw him in the flame. Okay. They saw him okay. in the water. They saw him in the burning bush. Oh. No. But in the days of the resurrection, God carries oh. us into the realm of the spirit to have visitation. Oh. That is why in the new covenant, forcing God to reveal himself and stand in front of you is a dangerous thing to do. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Father, because he has even given us the word. It's enough. Hallelujah. The word is enough. Listen, the pages of scriptures is your sure way of encountering the Lord. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm oh. telling you. Just stick to oh. the word. If he speaks to you in a vision, glory to God. If he gives you a vision because of the anointing and ministry gift you carry, glory to God. But don't push it. And when I say don't push it, I'm not saying don't. Of course, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you can go like, Lord, visit me. But don't push it like if I don't have to see something. Brothers and sisters, I, you will see something. I. <laughs> you will see something too. But let's just make sure that the <laughs> something you are seeing is from the Lord. <laughs> oh, yes. People want to see something and they get, they get to see something. And sometimes that thing is not from the Lord. And that's what he's saying here. Hallelujah. Mm. The worship of angels. So you can see some Christians and all their conversation is, Charlie had an encounter last night. An angel came to my room and the angel started. Hallelujah. And it's like everything the person is saying doesn't line up to the word of God. Mm. Listen, the devil is cunning. Yes, mm. Ezekiel 28 said, thou art wiser than Daniel. Mm. <laughs> the devil mm. is cunning. Bible says he is the son of wisdom. And beauty. That's what they were calling him mm. when he, before he fell. Mm. So Satan has a skill. Mm. Do you know the skill of Satan? When you were a baby in Christ, he attacks you with physical sins. Mm. When you mature in Christ, he attacks you with spiritual sins. Mm. And the spiritual ones are more heavy. Okay. Listen, let, let me just say mm. this. Let me just say this. Replace that. Re replace that. Yes. Replace when that. you are a baby in Christ, go, the devil attacks you with physical sins. Lying, okay. cheating, yeah. fighting, yeah. anger, those things. They are physical. But the more mature you get in the Lord, your attack is now spiritual. Your, your, your attack is now spiritual sins. It's no more physical sins. Why do I see what I say? Go and listen to and check the temptation of Jesus Christ. If you are not mm. spiritual, you will fail. Mm. Because the way mm. it comes, it comes as if it's the word of God. Mm. But it's a derail mm. from God's purpose. Because mm. the, this, look, if Satan didn't get... Look, he came to even, he went, and Bible said, and, and look for, he said he left him for a while. The devil does not come every day. He comes at your design season. The moment you're about to oh. break into your next season, he will come again. Even oh. Jesus, he came. He came even at the oh. time where breakthrough glorification was coming. So he came through oh. the disciple, Peter. And when okay. he came through the disciple, Peter, Jesus was so mature, he could see that, no, what Peter is... A lot of us pastors would have said, oh, Peter, you love me. You, you, you really you want to die for me. It's, oh. it's a good spirit. Hi. It's loyalty. But only for you to <laughs> not realize that that is the devil talking. Yeah. Why am I saying what I'm saying? Listen. <laughs> One day I was praying and I said, Lord, how come scripture said in Matthew that when a demon leaves a body, he goes out in dry places looking for another spirit. And when he comes to inspect, he realizes the place is empty. He goes uh, to get seven stronger spirits. 
to come and open the door for him so that the person is found worse off than he was before. And I said, Lord, how come this spirit is not able to enter? Then the Lord said, let me show you the demonic realm. I said, Lord, how is it? Do you know in James chapter 2 and James, when you read the book of James actually, he speaks about how wars come. And he said, wars come as a result of a certain spirit called envy. So, when you see two countries fighting, envy is the reason they are fighting. When you two see siblings at loggerheads, cousins, uncles, a family is in serious battle, envy caused it. Not murder, not hatred. Envy is the Lord that leads to murder and hatred. So actually, the ones we see as physical, the ones we see as physical are baby demons because they're the, the, the manipulating spirits, the stronger spirit is envy. Without it, Medan can come. Without it, you, you, uh, uh, yeah. what we call it, going to the shrine will not come. So, so the spirits we call very little, <laughs> like, oh, laziness, um, um, lies, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, hate, um, doubt, unbelief. Do you know what Jesus said? He said, you can cast out devils in my name. You can heal the sick in my name. But as for unbelief, you deal with it with fasting and prayer. With fasting and prayer. It, it right. tells you how strong unbelief is. It's a very strong spirit. Right. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, even fear is put in the category where he says it's the Holy Spirit that can handle fear. He said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear to fear again, but uh, the spirit of yeah. a power, love, and of sound mind. And of sound mind. It tells you, it tells you where the spirit of fear is. Listen, a bishop mm. and a pope, an archbishop, a high cardinal, major prophet, whatever you are, fear can creep in <laughs> and you'll be shocked. You are yeah. afraid. Yeah. No matter where you stand, you can get scared. That, that's a higher demon. Uh-huh. And when he starts getting you afraid, he'll start getting you confused, start getting you to doubt before lust to enter, before theft to enter, before greed to enter. So those Things you start seeing, the, the usual ones we see physically, uh, someone is chasing or someone's wife, it's, it's a product of a higher manipulation from a spirit we don't think is there. So when a spirit starts right. manipulating you to stop reading Bible, to get complacent, you have become a papa. You, now people respect your anointing. It's a higher spirit in hey. Britain. Because that same spirit went to tell Jesus, bow and worship to me, worship me, and I'll give oh. you all the kingdoms. Oh. And Jesus said, you shall worship oh. only the Lord your God. Oh. Then he said, oh, if oh. you are the son of God, turn this bread to stone. Oh. Very powerful oh. statement. And he quoted scripture as it is written. Judge Aye. as it is written. So if you are not sensitive in that realm, you will be giving to seducing spirit. And by the way, you see, when you check the word seducing spirit, seducing spirit is not a spirit that seduces you sexually. It seduces you from God. Your attention from God. Anything that starts seducing you is actually a spirit taking your attention from the Lord. So some, oh, Listen, <laughs> Gnosticism, all right? Gnosticism is what Paul is talking about over here. Mm-hmm. And he said, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are. Look at what the Amplified said. I want to read what the Amplified. Amplified version puts it nicely. The Amplified version in the verse number 18. It said, let no man defraud you in acting as an umpire and declaring you unworthy and disqualifying you for the price. Insisting on self-abasement, mm-hmm. self-abasement. You are, you are using your own efforts mm. to be humble. Like, it's like, oh, man of God, mm. you have to try and be humble. You have to try and be humble. You have to try and be humble. That, we don't try to be humble. It is a mm. fruit of the spirit. Mm. Fruit is a product of ah. life. It is not. That's why, listen, Galatians 5 separates it. Galatians 5, 19 says the works of the flesh. Works of the flesh means you are using effort to do it. When you are born again, mm. anytime you are sinning, you are using energy to sin. You are, you, because mm. Satan has to tempt you. And temptation is convincing you. Oh, you will not die. You oh. do it. Try it. I know you are tired. You, you just say it. Just try it. It's he, so you do something that is not from the life of God in you. That's why it's called works of the flesh. But when it comes to the fruit of the spirit, fruitage is a product of the life of God in you. Yeah. So humility is not an attempt to be humble. Humility is the oh. outflow of God's life. In any case, humility is not saying, oh, yes, sir, shit. thank you, please. I'm sorry, sir. And oh. bowing down and greeting your pastor. Thank you, pastor. Oh. Yes, pastor. No, I've seen some of the most proud people who do yes, sir. Yes, Ooh. pastor. And they're insulting with their heads. Humility, <laughs> according to First Peter 5, 
humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and you'll be lifted. In First Peter chapter 5. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and you'll be lifted. Galatians 5, 19, works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 22, 23, the fruit of the spirit. It's love, joy, gentleness, faithfulness, kindness, long-suffering, temperance, all that. He listed there. He listed there. Jesus also mentioned it in Matthew chapter 11. Lowliness and meekness, various virtues in the spirit. So the moment we enter into this self-abasement, Bible said not just self-abasement, worship of angels, oh. taking his stand on visions he claims he has seen. So he's saying oh. he does not take his stand on the word of God. His stand in life is a vision he saw. Oh. Oh. The Bible said that is beguiling. The devil is beguiling if you didn't know. Oh. Someone has a oh. dream and the person is so sad and down. And you ask him, what happened? I had a dream. I had a dream. And oh. it's like my dreams come to pass. No. The word of God is that which comes to pass. Your dreams can change. Oh, someone's like my dream comes to pass, so, man of God. This thing I know to come to pass. Hey, hey, the word of God is that which comes to pass. I say to you, it's only the word of God that comes to pass. It's only the word of God that comes to pass. Dreams can change. Hallelujah. Dreams can be altered. Oh. Dreams can be annulled. Oh. Annulled. Dreams oh. can be destroyed. It's only the word of God that oh. lives and abides forever. Oh. And Bible is saying that this oh. thing. When people begin to trust their vision. For instance, someone is married. Someone has a, has a brother, a friend. And all of a sudden, in the dream, they have a dream and the person is attacking them. All of a sudden, this person is not a good person. Ah, how about now? <laughs> or you had a dream and your pastor was chasing for a cutler. So all of a sudden, you are like, whoa. My I mean, pastor doesn't check. have a good spirit. I have been seeing some things about my pastor. You are following your dream <laughs> rather than the word of God. Then you leave the church, then you are, you are lost forever because you allow the dream com confuse you about where you're going. The word of God is final. Brothers and sisters, the word of God is final. I'm, I'm telling the gospel too, the word of mm. God is final. The word of God, if I've seen people who have trusted dreams their whole life and they have become not spiritual, but superstitious. Oh. That's what dreams do to you. It doesn't mm. make you spiritual. It makes you superstitious. Mm. But the word of God. Listen, mm. dreams don't make you grow. <laughs> mm. It is yeah. visions that make... It is, it is, sorry, it's the word of God that makes you grow. That he may grow their grow. life. Yeah. Wow. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Rabba, because Baba, you, I mean, I mean time, time will fail us to go into what dreams look like and all that. But let me give you a simple antidote for the type of dreams you dream. The amount oh. of word of God in you will determine the scope of your dream authenticity. Mm. Mm. There are some people you saw them in your dreams. They came to impart you, pray for you, all that. Then you woke up in the morning and got on the internet and read that they are frauds. They are fake men of God. They have juju. <laughs> Since that day, that man of God has never appeared in your dream again. What happened? Oh. Information. Changed how you saw the person, even in your dream. There are people who fear wow. dogs, who fear snakes, and when they dream, they run away from such things. But when they come to a certain ascendancy in the word of God, they can hold a snake in their dream like it is a belt. Some even oh. see wickedness, giants entering their room, and they will enter to punch that giant, even in their sleep, because they have gained a certain ascendancy in the word of God. Oh. Oh. So the moment you trust your dreams rather than the word of God, it will change a lot of things. And you will enter into what Paul is saying. You will be defrauded from the divine life. You will be defrauded I from the life God. of sanity, glory, satisfaction in Jesus Christ. Because every day there is a dream you dreamt that has destabilized you. You are always confused. You are always unsure. You are always tired. Some even dreams that, oh, there was rapture. And I saw pastors who didn't go. Hmm. And I even oh. saw Christians. I, I listened to the language. I saw Christians in hell. How? How, brothers and sisters? How? Then who shall be saved? <laughs> 
if Christians are hell, then let's all be in hell and let's all do hell, hellish things. <laughs> but you see, it is the information. Yeah, it's the information they have. It is the information they have. That's why I said, seeing you will see, but it is dependent on whether it is coming from the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Hello, Prof. Yes, sir. So it means, it means that uh, your content becomes a raw material for the quality and nature Correct. of the dreams you have. Correct. Wow. So the more you listen to the word, That's check serious. the type of dreams you have. You start seeing heaven. Mm. You start mm. seeing men of God. Mm. You are in a meeting. Mm. Preachings were happening. Prayer was happening. Sometimes it's so high that you are even speaking in tongues mm. in your dream. You wake up with tongues. It the content, like that. Con something is happening to your spirit, man. So it's alive. It's going on the right journey. It's going on the right uh, place. But the moment the content is wrong, Oh, Christians can go to Ooh. hell. And blah, blah, blah. All the, you Ooh. start dreaming that you saw this pastor in hell because you have a prejudice against that pastor. But you've never seen the pastor Aye. you love in hell. Aye. Aye. Because you have a personal, I love him. So he can't be there. So God, no, he can't, he can't be in hell. The ones I don't like, they are bad. So they are in hell. <laughs> See? Because of the information you keep having. Uh, that is why sometimes when people um, are sharing dreams, you have to measure it by the word of God. Someone says, man, I had a dream about you. It was so bad. And I saw that you were dead before your time. So let's pray. As long as you say that, I know it's not from God. You know why? Because God has given the man of God an assignment. God has given Pastor Isaiah an assignment. The assignment is not yet complete. Yeah, well, God is not going to say he's coming yeah. to die. It's the devil. Even, even yeah. if you dreamt, you should know it's a devil's plan. You should even come and narrate it. Be shy and say, Father, this is nonsense. We delete it. Don't come. Be shy. Next time, be shy to share some dreams. <laughs> Shyness, you have you. Yes, I am. Shyness, you have you. Amen. Now, that, so you, you understand what's going to happen next week. We are going to enter into yeah. the practice of this life. So you understand how to live. Hey. Because Paul is now veering from that. And yeah, he that. says that this causes something to happen to the believer that mm. does not see it. He enters mm. into something called the vainness of being puffed up by the fleshly mind. Mm. In fact, the literal Greek says that he is inflated. <laughs> he is inflated like a balloon, feeling he knows something and he has arrived because it's not the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God, like I said last week, makes you humble. It, listen, the way, the way we get to know God is the more you know God, the more you realize you don't know God. I'm telling the gospel to you. Like, mm, yes, someone asked you, the man of God, someone once asked a pastor, and I, was, I watched it, he said, yeah. Man of God. Yeah. I see you have encountered the prosperity anointing. How, how did you get it? The man of God looked at the young man and said, young man, I just started. I have not encountered yet. True, true humility comes from encountering the Lord. It, 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 it produces you that mm, there's so much to know. Yeah. There's so much to know. Aye, 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 I was telling Pastor Isaiah about my father and the Lord, and he said to me when he said, man of God, let's, I, I want us to pray. I said, that's why I said, so that God, God, I feel there's more about Christ I don't know. I need to know more. I need to know more. True humility comes. When you know God, you are like, I need to know more. I need to, I need to know more. I, oh, I don't know yet. I need, there's something that is not yet known. In fact, when it's real humility, when you get a revelation, you are not, you are not pumped up. You are not like, you have got the little. Because by the time you're even going to share, someone has shared it for 10 years. Ah, it's, it's, it's. It's just that, that you've not heard it yet. But someone has been teaching it all his life. And you think that, oh, you have got the fresh thing. So when you are sharing, they are just smiling and saying, oh, oh that's why we have passed oh, it. Oh. So real humility, oh. you even share what you know with a certain, oh, someone knows better. Someone has better. Someone might know more about this matter than me, but I'm just sharing my sweetness in the matter. My, 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 oh, my oh. understanding. Paul said, you know, oh, if you know oh. what is my understanding, oh. my sweetness concerning the oh. mystery of Christ. Sunesis. So that, that, we come to that place, brothers and sisters, and Paul saying that when the person enters in, I, 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 three years ago, an angel appeared to me. Four years ago, I saw an angel. I saw Baba. Angel Michael. I saw Angel Raphael. Hey. I saw this. You have never seen God. Every day you are seeing Michael, Raphael, Uriel, Cassiel. Angel. Angel. You have... angel your, your servants. <laughs> and some people, if you go like, man of God, I want, someone come and ask you, man of God, I want to see my angels. God should open my eyes to see my angels. You don't need to see your angels. Hey, listen, let me show you how angel, angels work. Bible says, are these not all ministering spirits 
<laughs> Sent forth to minister for the earth, not to the for the Hebrews 1 for the 14. Mm. They are sent to minister for, not to us. Angels don't minister to us. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit ministers to the believer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in the New Testament, let me show you something. When you are not born again, angels reap you to where the gospel is preached. That's what Matthew 13 okay. said. The angels are the reapers. They will motion oh. you and bring you close to the gospel, to people that carry oh. the gospel. Oh. All right? The angel did it to, oh. the eunuch did it to Cornelius, appeared to Cornelius oh. and said, listen, the oh. angel appeared to Cornelius and said, we have heard your prayer. It's a, oh. It has come before oh. us as a, as a memorial. Oh. Why didn't the angel oh. preach to Cornelius? But he says, send for Peter. Oh. He knows what to do with you. The angel oh. should have just, because if the man has encountered an angel, why does God oh. need Peter to come and do the work? Because in oh. the spirit, in, listen, in the spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 11, there's ranking. <laughs> Christ is the head of man. Man is the oh. head of the woman. And woman is even higher than angels. That's what 1 oh. Corinthians 11.10 said. The woman ought to have oh. authority over her head because of the angels. So she's also higher in ranking in the spirit than the angels. Oh. 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 So God, Christ, man, woman, angels. That's the ranking. So let me say this emphatically in case you've heard this heresy or Gnostic teaching. Listen. Nowhere in any circumstance and under any occasion does a man die to become an angel? It is a wrong teaching. That is the worship of angels. We don't die to become angels. Angels are not in the image and likeness of God. So yeah. to die to be an angel is a reduction oh. in the quality and the reduction oh. of your person. He said, know ye not that ye shall judge angels. He said, how come you are oh. still fighting amongst yourselves? First Corinthians 5. He said, you are taking mm. yourselves one another to court. Don't you know you judge angels? And the word judge there is krino. Krino means you are going to be angelic administrators. Mm. In the age to come, some people who will be ruling mm. 25 nations and 35 nations will have mm. angels as mm. assistants. Mm. And Hebrews 1 mm. said it. They are sent forth spirits, sent to minister mm. to the heirs, for the heirs of mm. salvation. So angels minister mm. for us. That's why worship of mm. angels is a reduction. It's a mm. reduction. Mm. No wonder Revelation 19, mm. when John saw an angel and was about to kneel down and worship him, the angel said, don't worship me. I'm a servant together with you. Mm. I'm a servant together with you. So mm. don't worship me. Mm. He was about to worship the angel. He said, no, 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 mm. no, don't try it. I'm a servant together with you. I can't be worshipped. Mm. Mm. So how then do we on earth, in our heightened glory, in, you know, enter into the realms where we are, we are sort of seeking angels. Angels to assist us and all that. So brothers and sisters, these are the realities we must understand. <laughs> then he says that it causes you to swell up like a balloon. <laughs> because now, the Greek says, because now, the King James says fleshly mind. But in the Greek, it actually says because the mind is of the flesh. Mm. The mind mm. of his flesh. Mm. And when the Bible says mind of his flesh, remember Romans 8, verse 6, he says that now to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm. Your mindedness determines the animation of your life. If you are minded in the flesh, mm. you'll be carnal. If you are minded in the spirit, you'll mm. be spiritual. So your spirituality mm. is where your mind goes to. Mm. We'll get there in ch chapter 3. Now, not mm. only so, the Bible says in verse 27 mm. that he that searched the heart know what, mm. what is the mind of the spirit. So there's the mind of the flesh and the mind of the spirit. The mind of the spirit mm. means the spirit owns your mind now. The mind of the flesh means your flesh owns your mind now. Mm. Mm. And the way your flesh is owned the way your mind is owned by the flesh is when you enter into mm. such things. Voluntary mm. humility. You are using your own effort. Mm. You, are, you are now interested in angels, encounters, because you have forgotten that the Lord Jesus Christ is higher than all these angels. Yet you yes. want to see angels rather than the Lord. That's why I get concerned when people go like, I want to see angels. I go like, so you don't like the Lord. You want to see angels. <laughs> the Lord is the goal. The Lord is the goal. Now, he doesn't now wow. end there. He goes in verse 19, okay? So, 
So, so this is where Gnosticism comes from. It's a heretic teaching, okay? And this is... And Gnosis, this Gnosticism entered the Galatian church. And Galatian, the Galatian church, Paul wrote that letter around AD 48, AD 52, that about. And when he wrote the oh. letter to Galatia, he oh. addressed Gnosticism over there. That's why even in chapter oh. 5, he spoke oh. about the works of the flesh, works oh. of the spirit. And remember, before oh. he got to the ending of Galatians 5, he started from chapter 1, yes, eh, verse 1 of Galatians yes, 5, and said, yes, sir. we should walk therefore in the liberty which is in Christ Jesus, and not to be yoked again yes, with the bondage. Oh. And that was the bondage of oh. Gnosticism that was entering. But that oh. Gnostic oh. bondage was a product of oh. Judaic tendencies. It had to mm. date practices in that Gnosticism. Mm. Now, I'm mm. saying this to get you to get this thing. So, in the Galatian issue, it was a Judaic tendency that had entered Gnosticism that was being taught to the Galatian mm. church. Yes, that sir. is why he spoke about Jerusalem, which is above. It's the mother of us all. And he spoke about the mm. gendering of grace and the gendering of promise. Because Judaic mm. tendencies had infused Gnosticism in the church of Galatia. But when he came mm. in AD 60, when he was writing the letter to Colossi, the tendency mm. had graduated because of the Greco-Roman mm. Roman influence that had increased. Hellenistic Greek, you know, had entered mm. the Roman system. So what was happening was yes, that sir. now at this period, it was believed that the Romans were now adapting the Hellenistic, you know, uh, uh, mm. tendencies of the Grecians, okay, because they took over from the mm. Grecians. So these Hellenistic yes, tendencies, when you say Hellenistic tendencies, that's where we get classical Greek. And classical Greek was during the time of Alexandra, where the stories of Zeus, Hercules, and you know, all those stories mm. came into existence. So mm. that's where they wrote mm. a certain way, communicated a certain mm. uh, um, dimension of thinking. Mm. Okay. Mm. So around this time in mm. Paul's writing to Colossae, not just Judaic mm. tendencies, but they also had uh, what we call the Neoplatonism tendencies. And Neoplatonism oh. was actually teachings from Plato. Oh. Teachings from Plato. Wow. So it was Grecian philosophical tendency that had entered the system. Oh. Oh. So they had oh. a man called uh, Valentinos. Okay, so Valentinism yes, had entered. Then we also had Satanism. Satanism was also another oh. teacher. Who, so they were, they were just introducing things into the system. Mm. And when they were introducing the things, mm. what they did was this. In fact, if you check through history mm. well, it was believed mm. that at some point, Buddhism was a product of Gnosticism. Okay. And the reason was this, that Gnosticism is a higher dimension of knowledge that believes that material things are actually mundane and filthy. So the okay. Gnostic separates thought from matter. Matter was depraved. Matter was flawed. Matter was yes, damned. But thought was yes. the height. So the thought process increased not into revelation and the knowledge of God, but rather into, illu into illumination and enlightenment. Mm. It even became the bedrock mm. of the emphasis of the, what we call Illuminati today, but the enlightened ones. Okay. They were called the enlightened ones. Okay. Okay. The eye upon the, okay. the, the cap and all those things. Yes, it caused yes, all sir. those type of things. And what is happening is this, that it entered the church. Because what happened was that oh. they believed that between God, because now this was a combination oh. of two things, mysticism oh. and legalism. That's what oh. created Gnosticism. Oh. Yes, sir. And this is why heresy is coming. I'm telling you, sometimes, somehow, how we pray is, is, is mysticism. Oh. <laughs> Let me touch on that. Oh. Let me touch on that. For instance, yes, sir. The way we pray in church today, unfortunately, has been tainted with a lot of mysticism and earthly mm. uh, tendencies. How do I mean by that? Jesus yes, said, when you pray, do not pay, pray with vain repetitions like the unbelievers, thinking that they shall be heard. Yes, now, mm. if we check the scriptures, he used the word vain. Vain is empty repetitions. It means that the yes, issue sir. is not repetitions. It is the type of repetitions. Okay. He said the repetitions are empty. So there are repetitions that are necessary. Wow. Not, so he said vain repetitions. He gave an adjective. It's an adjective to the type mm. of repetitions. Mm. Okay. Mm. And this was a product of what happened at the Mount of Camel with the prophets of Baal. The yes, prophet sir. Elijah said, Baal is traveled. He is gone mm. far. So scream harder. Mm. Catch yourself. Mm. 
hurt yourself, oh. and he will hear you. And that's how Christians pray today. <laughs> we feel when we hurt ourselves, and we, we, we scream harder, God will hear us. Oh, oh, oh. There is a place yeah, for strong yeah, 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 crying. Yeah. But you must understand yeah. that the strong crying should not be replaced in the spirit of effort that the harder I pray, the more God hears me. It should be prayed oh, yeah, from the premise of I'm praying hard because all of a sudden the spirit has taken over and I'm groaning with groanings by the spirit Ooh. of God. Not because I feel that the harder I pray, the better, the better I pray. So I'm saying that Gnosticism is, is still lingering around in the church. It's still oh. lingering around the church. And, and that's why Colossians is necessary for all of us to see our eyes must be open. Our eyes oh. must be open into the reality of this gospel. And as our oh. eyes are open into the reality of this gospel, we will come to understand what God was delivering us from scripturally through the church of Colossae. He says it was a dualism between mysticism and legalism. Oh. So that instead of one thinking that they were being enlightened rather, they were rather actually being engendered to further bondage. So, for instance, if you don't have a pack, you feel you can't pray. Or if you can't do metana, metana, mama, you can't pray in your office. Because all you know is, Hiya. but it's not that. <laughs> you can pray silently. Father, we give you glory. Father, you have to let, listen, there were days Jesus prayed under tomb. There were days Jesus screamed with strong crying. There are many types of prayers. Yes. Praying in this, he said, praying with all manner of prayers in the spirit. In the spirit. So the spirit must be the motion ah. for your prayer. Do you know what Psalm eighty said? When I read that scripture, I was scared. He said, yes. "Quicken us, and we shall call upon you." Mm. Quicken us. If mm. God does not quicken you, you are doing you are doing religious service. Mm. You are no different from a Buddhist. Mm. You are no different from someone in a shrine chanting because He has not quickened mm. you yet. Oh. But when you are quickened, oh. there's revelation behind your prayer. Ma, bo, zush, ke, you sense the anointing. Then whether you scream or you, you speak undertone, the prayer is in the frequency of God. You are getting answers. You are getting answers. You are getting answers. You are getting answers. But as it says, we just have to come to the reality of the substance of the finished work of Christ. <laughs> right. And enjoy it. It's a I'm telling you, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. You just gotta enjoy it. You just got to